Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Democracy and Development, Confronting a Central Ethical Dilemma of International Development with Lessons from Rwanda and the Gambia. In this video we're going to be looking at constitutions and rights. If you haven't checked out the previous videos in this series, now might be a good time to do that. We're going to be building on some of the ideas and concepts we built on in those first couple videos, so if you haven't checked them out, it's highly recommended that you do so. So in the previous video, we examined David Crocker's claim that so long as a process is sufficiently democratic along his seven different dimensions, it's going to result in a good outcome. And if it results in a bad outcome, it's because you weren't in democratic enough along one of those dimensions. Any bad laws are the fault of a bad process or insufficiently democratic system. If the system is fully democratic, its decisions must be moral, and there is no external moral code to which we should compare them. Crocker is committed to enacting the decision of the community, even if he thinks it's immoral, so long as he believes the process is sufficiently deliberatively democratic. In this video, we're going to look at a contrasting view offered by Martha Nussbaum and Crocker's rebuttal to that view. So, in her paper, Women's Bodies, Violence, Security, and Capabilities, Nussbaum argues that there should be a minimum standard of rights or capabilities that should be guaranteed to all through something like a worldwide constitution. She claims that deliberative democracy or democratic deliberation frequently fails to protect women from violence. When we think about the violence against women, we see that democratic deliberation has done a bad job so far with this problem. According to Nussbaum, this is because Community or country-level democracies are allowed to operate without international intervention. Nussbaum argues that the way to guarantee women particular rights is not through more democracy, as Crocker would have it, but in fact to endorse a list of capabilities which should be guaranteed to all, even in the face of people democratically choosing to limit their own rights. This list should be something which the international community continues to debate, but individual countries should not be allowed to circumvent it or change it. According to Nussbaum, this is the only way we can really protect the rights of women, the rights of the vulnerable, the rights of people who frequently have been pushed out of democracy or who haven't been a part of the democratic process. Therefore, Nussbaum is committed to the other horn of our original dilemma. She would have the development practitioner refuse to help the community enact some intervention which violated the universally decided upon rights. For Nussbaum, we should limit the freedoms of communities to do things, those things which the international powers have decided are unacceptable. We should limit them to the things that the international powers have decided are acceptable. From her perspective, rejecting the culturally relativistic claim that there can be different ethical norms in different communities means rejecting the subsequent claim that communities can decide how to govern themselves, at least if their choices turn out to be unethical. Crocker offers four responses to Nussbaum's objections in Participation in Local Development. He argues that Nussbaum unfairly compares an ideal universal constitution with real, actual existing democracies. According to Crocker, if Nussbaum either compared a real constitution with a real democracy, or an ideal constitution with an ideal democracy, she would at least find the constitution as problematic as the deliberative democracy, if not more so. Second, he claims that while democracies should do better, the way in which they are most likely to do better is by becoming more democratic along the dimensions he's outlined, particularly those around inclusiveness and historical underrepresentation in the democratic process. If women are being harmed, perhaps the lack of thickness in their participation is what's causing it, or the lack of inclusiveness of the individuals that are being harmed, and a combination of those two dimensions. Perhaps the democracy is not sufficiently inclusive or has not addressed the previous barriers to participation which prevent people from being thickly included in the democracy. Third, he argues that constitutions are themselves a part and product of deliberative democracies and therefore need not be opposed from above, but rather created as a part of the democratic process. By simply letting countries with the power, be that economic or military power, dictate the rules, democracy is harmed. 
Finally, he claims that all of the hard and fast rules on Nussbaum's list should be up for interpretation based on the situation of the particular society. A society may choose to give up security to gain more privacy because of the particular situation of the country where the people perhaps do not trust the government with their information, even if the security of a person is a guaranteed right under the Constitution. So different countries and different organizations should be allowed to move to certain areas depending on their own histories, their own cultures, and the perspectives within that country. A society should be allowed to voluntarily give up some of its rights in favor of other rights. Crocker concludes that more democracy will solve the problems that Nussbaum enumerates without a need for a constitution, or if there is such a need, it will be sufficiently democratically created so long as the process is sufficiently democratic. Hopefully you get a strong sense of what Crocker thinks the solution to most of the problems here are. Add more democracy. If there's something's wrong, just add more democracy. There's not enough participation on one of the seven different dimensions. What do you think? Who's right? Should we trust a system that is sufficiently democratic? Or should we guarantee everyone rights regardless of what the people want? This is very much the central question of the dilemma. Who's right, Crocker or Nussbaum? In the next video, I'm going to say neither of them are. Because I think there's a third way forward. But if you had to pick, where would you fall in this distinction? What's your intuition leaning towards right now? So next up, we're going to do objections to both Crocker and Nussbaum, and we're going to give some arguments for why both of these sides really fail to solve the problem that they're trying to solve. Then we'll do the Wahale method of development, where we actually look at a positive theory we're putting forward that tries to solve both of those problems, all of the problems for Crocker and Nussbaum, and present that third way forward. Then we'll look at three different kinds of objections to that positive theory we've put forward, the Wahale method of development, and some responses from that method's perspective to defend it. Watch this video and more here at carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.